is the national top story on Australia's ABC News, the Australian public broadcaster. It's a feel-good story about the COVID vaccine. Chiara spent 2020 in a UK hospital. Now she's among the first Australians to get a COVID-19 vaccine. While many Australians at home are still anxiously waiting for a coronavirus vaccine — I'm not — some stuck overseas have already received the injection and are feeling grateful. OK, let's go into that article a bit further. Australians stuck overseas share their experiences of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Now I'm only going to go into the feel-good aspects of this uh, article because I have a point to prove here. So there's the lady in question, uh, Chiara Gelly, an emergency nurse in England. Um, First of all, of course, the article has to remind us how deadly the coronavirus is. The UK soon became an epicenter of coronavirus in Europe. More than 80,000 people have died in Britain, the fifth highest official death toll in the world, and it's estimated one in 50 people have been infected with the virus. Hmm, that's a lot of people. But still, it's only one in 50. If it was some sort of super spreading, super contagious uh, disease, then surely more than one in 50 people would have it. Um, I'm not playing down that a lot of you know a lot of people still have it, but it's not as super spreading as first made out. I think the UK has since become the first country to approve vaccines developed by Pfizer and BioNTech. As a frontline worker, Ms. Gelly was among the first wave of people to receive the Pfizer injection. Here's her vaccination card. As you can tell, it's impossible to forge. Uh, she said it was normal for many health workers to be vaccinated at her hospital and it was a smooth process. It was normal. That's the key word, I think. They want to normalise all of this. But the whole process was easy. It was literally just like getting any other vaccine. I didn't feel sick or anything. I went to work the next day on Christmas. Oh, how nice. Not a, nothing, nothing wrong at all. The vaccine was perfectly okay. And I'm sure it was. I'm sure this is 100% real. Now, ignore all that part. Ms. Gelly said she was grateful to be part of the vaccination program. It was a bit of a Christmas present, she said. I think they're still finding some more stuff out as we go through it, but I'm happy to be the guinea pig, to be honest. And she's right. She is being a guinea pig. This vaccine was severely rushed, and they've rolled it out to millions of people. And she was, she was one of them as well. She kind of had to do it for work, I assume. Going on. Across the pond, Alison Kirkpatrick, an occupational therapist at a trauma hospital in Dallas, Texas, is now fully vaccinated. And she says, there, were, there may be things like fatigue, muscle aches, soreness, a fever, and things like that, she said. I was a little bit more worried for the second jab, but honestly, I didn't have any reactions at all to either of them. Although, although there are some reports of people having severe allergic reactions afterwards, that didn't deter her. So at least the ABC have included some of the negative aspects of the vaccine, although it's way down in their article. Uh, otherwise, they're highlighting the fact that all these people had very minimal reactions to the vaccine. Fine, let's move on. The US has been hit hard by the pandemic, again reminding us that the uh, coronavirus is deadly, with more than 4,000 deaths recorded within just 24 hours a week ago. Okay, yep, super deadly. Moving on, Ms. Kirkpatrick said she hoped getting vaccinated would bring her one step closer to a normal life. Well, that, to me that indicates that she isn't living a normal life despite being vaccinated. I'm looking forward to just being able to maybe go out and have a meal at a restaurant, maybe go to the supermarket when it's not the crack of dawn and nobody else is there. So obviously she doesn't have those freedoms at the moment. The vaccine has not benefited her in that sense. Uh, there she is, masked up and all. Um, okay, this is another uh, worker, I believe in UAE, yeah. Mr. Anis is a former air crew member who is currently stuck in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. He volunteered in a trial program for the Chinese vaccine developed by Sinopharm in August last year. Okay, so he's trying a different vaccine here. Uh, I just thought when all your decisions are taken away from you, it's just so important for yourself to actually be able to make just even one. I also wanted to contribute my small part to humanity. Okay, so he's got a, a, uh, a greater sort of reason for doing it. Mr. Anise said he thought Western countries could learn from the UAE when it came to the vaccine rollout. 
I think the vaccination should have been mandated in the first instance. There shouldn't have been any delay with that in Australia." Well, obviously he's all for mandatory vaccination, especially in Australia, so they've put him on the front page news. For Ms Gelly, so that was the critical care nurse or the emergency nurse from above. For Ms Gelly, she said she hoped being vaccinated would get her home sooner. Naturally, I just want to come home. I'm a big home girl and I'm not one for cold weather. My message is don't be scared to get the vaccine at all. I am the living proof that it's perfectly fine. Well, as a nurse, she should probably realise that a single case of a person being okay with the vaccine does not prove that the vaccine is safe. It just proves it didn't hurt her. The ABC asked the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade DFAT, whether being vaccinated would speed up the process for Australians looking to return from overseas. At this time, vaccination against COVID-19 does not change the mandatory 14-day quarantine for travellers to Australia at designated facilities in the first port of arrival. So yes, being vaccinated doesn't help a damn cent when it comes to returning home and avoiding quarantine and all the rest of it. Now one thing I noticed that wasn't in this article, they had lots of good stories about all these Australians getting vaccines and saying how wonderful it is. They didn't mention once about the Norway deaths. About 30 people died in Norway soon after receiving their vaccine. Now to be fair to the ABC, they did mention it, but they mentioned it, if I just scroll down here you'll see where they mention it. So about 10 or 12 articles down, proceeding with an abundance of caution, Australia asks for more information on Pfizer jab after Norwegian deaths. So they did mention it, but it wasn't the number one news article, which I thought it might be. It certainly wasn't. Uh, instead they were trying to promote the vaccine. So just from that action, just from the way that the ABC have dealt with this means they're trying to, I suppose, hide this information. They're not hiding it per se, but they're making it harder for people to find. They want people to know that the vaccine is safe. Now, if we go, now if we go to another news agency that are reporting this news, uh, Channel 9 News for example, Australia seeking urgent advice from Norway after Pfizer vaccine deaths, January 17, 2021. Uh, the Australian government is urgently seeking advice from Norway after reports up to 30 people have died after receiving the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. The vaccine was rolled out to the Scandinavian nation's elderly and people in nursing homes with serious underlying diseases. Norway's medical regulator says reports suggest common adverse reactions to mRNA vaccines such as fever and nausea may have contributed to a fatal outcome in some frail patients. Australia has an agreement to purchase 10 million doses of the Pfizer jab. We're proceeding with an abundance of caution, Health Minister Greg Hunt said. Infectious disease specialist Anthony Professor, sorry, <laughs> Associate Professor Sanjaya Senayaka told Nine News the vaccine deaths could be coincidental. This could just be coincidental that you have people with chronic health problems who just succumb to the, their chronic illnesses rather than due to the vaccine itself. Now that point that he's making there is the exact point that many people were making about coronavirus initially. So just, I'll just one note here, aged care residents and older Australians will be vaccinated in the first phase of the rollout. So the first people to get vaccinated in Australia are the elderly. And we've already got reports of people dying from it, elderly people dying from the vaccine. Now this is the point that I'd like to focus on here. Now. There was a huge beat up in the media about how deadly coronavirus is, but if we look at the actual statistics, so these are the statistics in Australia, there have been 909 deaths in Australia, most of which were in Victoria, 820 were in Victoria, and the re well, most of the rest were in New South Wales, 54. If we go to the Department of Health's own website, so this is the Australian Government Department of Health, COVID-19 cases in aged care services, residential care. Now if we look at their graph here, so deaths are in orange, there have been 685 deaths in Australia in nursing homes and aged care facilities, 655 of which were in Victoria. Now remembering there are only a total of 909 deaths in Australia from coronavirus, most of which have been in nursing homes. Now remember Dr Sanjay or whatever his name was, was saying, oh these deaths from the vaccine could just be coincidental. It's just that the, the elderly people were frail and had other underlying health um, problems. So them taking a vaccine may have not contributed at all to their likelihood of death, 
whether they took it or not, they could have well died in the next few days or not whatever else. Well, that argument is exactly the same as this one. Those people in nursing homes, those 685 people who died, yeah, sure, they tested positive with coronavirus, either just before they died or after death, but that doesn't mean coronavirus killed them. They were already frail. So we have to use common sense here. Either we say that the vaccine can kill old people, which people who took it have died, and therefore we have to be very cautious with that vaccine, or we look at it in this light, this could just be coincidental that you have people with chronic health problems who just succumb to their chronic illnesses. But if we agree that that's a possibility, then we should also agree that those people who died in nursing homes from coronavirus possibly didn't die from coronavirus. We're just saying that they did. I would suggest that coronavirus isn't as deadly as it's made out to be. People dying in nursing homes could well possibly be dying anyway. Maybe the coronavirus sped up their deaths. Maybe they died a few weeks earlier. It's a hard thing to prove, I suppose. But then it's equally hard to prove that this vaccine wasn't the thing that killed the elderly people rather than their underlying illnesses. I still find it funny that the ABC have kind of hidden away the Norwegian deaths right down, you know, 10 or 15 articles from the top. Whereas the number one article is a feel-good story about how people are feeling great about the vaccine and how they were grateful to get it and all the rest of it. To me, it just feels like that we're being manipulated by the media, which I suppose we always have been. But this is, to me, obvious manipulation. They want us to think that the vaccine is 100% safe, tuck away those other stories to the side, and even those other stories which are hidden away, they still say that it could just be coincidental that those old people died from after, after having the vaccine. But as I said, if they say that, then they have to say that those people who, all those old people, so most of the people who died from coronavirus in Australia, those old people could have coincidentally died just because they were old and frail. Instead of saying they definitely died from coronavirus, let's lock down the world, let's make masks mandatory, let's close down businesses, let's ruin the economy, let's ban international travel, all of that because some old people died in a nursing home and somebody said they died from this new coronavirus. What do you think? Is the media trying to spin this? Why are the ABC hiding the Norwegian death story? Is it just because they don't want to get people anxious? They don't want people to get too scared? I think I know the answer. I think the government, or the people at the ABC, do not want us to be scared of the vaccine. Because if we are, then suddenly all those vaccines that they've purchased They'll have a damn tough time convincing the public to get one.